variety. So all of the treatment is almost the same. So it's still 14% market rate. But this time, the business model is different. The business model is simply to collect contractual cash flows until maturity. Because of these keywords, the business model is hold to collect. And if it's hold to collect, the treatment would be under amortized cost. So there's a need for us to prepare the amortization table. So the balance initially, the entry would still be the same as FVOCI where we classify the or we capitalize the transaction cost. So debit, investment in bonds, credit, cash, 3761. So this is the same table. I'll just copy what we did from the previous video. All right. And so our interest received, again, this is a term bond, so you will always receive the same amount of interest. So debit, cash, credit, interest, income, 240. And we amortize the discount. We debit investment in bonds and credit interest income 2323 again that's based on the green cells here so nothing different so far right our carrying amount on 7 1 2022 is straight up from our amortization table our carrying amount on December 31, 2022 is also from the amortization table, the balance there on that particular row. Our unrealized gain or loss is zero. Now it's different because under the amortized cost, fair value changes are ignored. And the interest income in 2022 is from the amortization table, the interest income from January to December 2022 which is comprising of two items in the amortization table, right? Interest income column, 263, and then 264. All righty. Now at year end, we received the same interest, so same cash flows, but the amortization will be different. Same accounts, increase in investment in bond, increase in interest income, but in our amortization table, December 31, 2022 row, this would be 24898.9. 24898.9. Okay. Again, it's much simpler here in our carrying amount. Let's write this down here. Once again, fair value changes are ignored. Therefore, no unrealized gain or loss. Right? Very important to take note because this is, again, amortized cost. It's much simpler than FVOCI. <clears throat> now, in 2023, once again, we have sold, right? We have sold our investment. So before selling, we account, once again, the interest that we received and the amortized or the amortization of our discount. So on 7-1-2023, we still base it on our amortization table. 7-1-2023 amortization table, it is 266-641.82. Lastly, we recognize the sale. To put it simply, we debit the cash. And once again, if you scroll back up, our company sold the investment at 110. This means since this is a quoted price, it's compared or it is assessed with the face value, 4 million. And so debit cash, 4 million multiplied by 110%. And we eliminate our investment in bonds. At that time, 7 2023 after updating 
our bonds value that is simply the value in the amortization table 3 835810.72 and the difference would be recognized as a gain on 564100.72 since we're already here, our amortized cost, the plan is really to hold it until maturity. So let's present an additional situation and complete the amortization table until the maturity date. Okay? So once again, the balance is 3761 initially, right? Our interest received is always 4 million times 6% or times. 12% times 6 months out of 12, right? However, for our interest income, that would change, right? It's always based on the previous balance multiplied by 7%. The difference of the two would be our discount amortization and that will increase our balance. So we do the same here. We have the same formula here. The difference. And then that is an addition. One last line. 240, same amount. This would be the same formula, the difference. And here, that is our 7 1 2023 carrying a value, right? 3835810.72. A while ago, we have used that amount. So 240, previous balance times 7%. Once again, that's 14% times six months out of 12 the discount amortization, and the balance. So now we just drag this down. So once again, this should be 4 million. The difference, 37,620. So your interest income should be 277,620.92 for the last line. You only do this manually in order to address the, fair, uh, the changes in or the differences due to the rounding off of numbers, right? But that is very minimal. Just make sure, since this is a term bond, the final balance on maturity date should equal the face value. So there's a few rounding off here in the last line. Nevertheless, if we did not sell our investment, instead, we have collected it on maturity date. First, we recognize the entries on July 1, 2025. We have received interest. Then we discounted or we have amortized our discount on 7 1 2025 that increases our investment and increases our interest income. By the way, if you add this, same as true with the other years, you will indeed have a total of interest for that particular line, for that particular row, 274,922, right? It's like saying that the interest income is comprising of what you have received and the discount amortization, right? Notice in every line, 263 is equal to 240 plus 23, 264 is 240 plus 24, so on and so forth. Anyway, on 1231-2025, we do the same thing, same amount for the interest received, always 240. But for the discount amortization, we observe carefully the last line, 37,620.93. So our balance at the maturity date would be 4 million. So we would debit now, since this is now maturity, we collect debit cash, credit investment in. So this would be 4 million. 4 million. 